1,200 kilometers off the coast of Mexico lies a lost and little known island, Clipperton, a tiny atoll whipped by winds and battered by Pacific breakers. Explorer Jean-Louis Etienne set sail to discover this unique ecosystem. He and his family, along with an international team of scientists, will live on the island for four months. Within a few days, a small village springs up on the Ring of Coral. The 40 scientists get down to exploring the unique biodiversity of this special island, the island at the end of the world. Clipperton is home to the Gigarcinus planatus, a most puzzling creature. It is a land crab, yet here it is in the middle of the ocean on an almost deserted atoll. Apparently, this creature has no natural predators, as its bright color would make it easy to spot and very vulnerable. Jean-Marie Bouchard has a doctorate in biology and specializes in crustaceans, creatures covered by a hard carapace or shell. The scientists who study them are known as carcinologists. Clipperton is an exceptional site for carrying out this type of research. Ben là, je suis en train de tout simplement de compter des crabes. Donc j'ai délimité un périmètre et dans ce périmètre, je cherche tous les animaux qui sont présents. Alors il y a des animaux que j'attrape euh, immédiatement parce qu'ils sont à la surface et il y en a d'autres qui sont bien cachés dans leur terrier. Alors même si euh, ces terriers, on a l'impression que je les, enfin, que je les détruis euh, aujourd'hui, et eh bien demain ils les reconstruiront. Alors, on reconnaît très facilement les mâles des femelles grâce à la forme de l'abdomen. L'abdomen est bien triangulaire, donc il s'agit d'un mâle. Les plus gros animaux ici, les plus gros crabes ici sont, sont des mâles. Contrairement au mâle qui a l'abdomen triangulaire, ben celle, cette femelle a son abdomen qui est arrondi et qui prend l'ensemble de la surface du sternum. Here in the shade of the palm trees, Jean-Marie has identified 170 crabs in an area of 100 square meters. He sometimes finds them at a depth of more than 30 centimeters underground. If there are that many crabs living on the rest of the two square kilometers of the island, then Clipperton may be inhabited by over several hundred thousand crabs in all. On this coral reef, the Gigarcinus planatus is the lord of the land, but biologists expect to find lots of other crustaceans living along the reef's submerged slopes. Crustaceans are to the sea what insects are on land. The number of different genuses, species, and families can make you dizzy. Decapods, stomatopods. Catching them on Clipperton requires the brushing and suction method. Scientists perform their search at sea level all the way down to a depth of 60 meters in a marine environment which is often hit by typhoons. The coral is broken by the swells Life has a hard time taking firm hold. The expedition's team of carcinologists intends to compare the biodiversity of Clipperton with that of other islands in the Eastern Pacific, which are not made of coral, such as the Galapagos, Cocos, or Malpilo Islands. In the field lab, the team establishes some initial conclusions. There are not that many different species, but each has many individual members. 
in all, the West Pacific Islands, when studied in previous years, yielded a total of 488 species of crustaceans. At Clipperton, the biologists have found just 61. The unique and native species of the island represent no more than 6% of this number. One of them is this hermit crab with orange legs. The team will deliver more than 1,000 jars of different samples to a lab for analysis. Many of the specimens will be added to the collections of the Natural History Museum in Paris and provide an accessible reference source for scientists around the world. In order to protect themselves during the hottest hours of the day, certain crabs dig a temporary shelter. It takes them over 15 minutes to shift around a kilo of sand. Understandably, it's really tempting just to squat in someone else's hole. At Clipperton, the crabs live in 12 different environments. By the cocoa palms, on the beach, a terrace formed by sediment, the carcinologist must study them all. The counting takes place between 10.30 in the morning and 5 in the evening, the time when most of the crabs are sheltering in their burrows, away from the heat. The planatus is well adapted to the island and cohabits rather well with the 120,000 mast boobies and their sharp beaks. Jean-Marie marks 100 crabs whose behavior he will study day after day. The felt tip pen numbers will disappear when the crabs shed their skins, as they do once a year. Twenty or so will be sent to the museum and placed in a replica of their natural environment, so that observations may be continued after the expedition comes to an end. Today it appears that the Planatus is in danger. Scientists on previous expeditions estimated there were more than 10 million of them. But after several weeks, Jean-Marie estimates their number is down to only one million, indicating a major decline. Jean-Louis Etienne discusses this problem during a teleconference. Nous avons ici à l'heure actuelle Robert Pittman, qui est un biologiste américain. Il nous a raconté que la première fois qu'il était venu, il y a une vingtaine d'années, il y avait des crabes en abondance, alors que maintenant, il trouve qu'on vit beaucoup plus tranquillement. Bon, il est évident que à chaque repas ou chaque fois qu'on reste assis ou immobile, les animaux, les crabes viennent sur vos pieds. Mais il, il dit qu'il y a une vingtaine d'années, c'était le soir, le sol était rouge de crabe. Et c'est ce que décrivaient aussi les militaires des années 66. Donc le crabe est en, en recul sur cette île. Et pourquoi le crabe est-il en recul Il n'y a pas beaucoup d'explications. De, de, ce que l'on peut dire peut-être, c'est que le rat s'est développé. Et on a vu dans les tanières de rats que les rats mangeaient beaucoup de petits crabes. Alors peut-être est-ce que c'est... Ce sont les rats qui, qui sont à l'origine de cette diminution du nombre de crabes. On ne le, on ne le sait pas. The scientists Michel Pascal and Olivier Lorvelec have been given the task of getting rid of the rats. Et voilà notre cher petit bouffeur de crabes. Il n'y a aucun oiseau ici non. capable de, ça de faire ça. C'est peut-être lui qui a tué tous les crabes qui sont là. These rodents arrived by accident and are disturbing the island's natural balance. Michel and Olivier, the rat killers, have a delicate task. The rats seem to have proliferated more than expected. A failed extermination is the worst. The few remaining rats are generally the most cunning. At the same time, their prey species, freed from the pressure of predators, proliferate in their turn, till they become a formidable store of food for future generations of rats. Of course, the well-fed rats then go on to multiply at an astonishing rate. They double their numbers compared to the initial colony and once more disturb the ecosystem they have colonized. The sudden explosion of the population could cause the disappearance of the species we want to protect. La moyenne remonte 27. It seems the rats were introduced to the islands in 1998. They arrived as stowaways on a boat that was tossed about by a storm and ran aground on one of the beaches. Ironically, the shipwreck now has been colonized by another crab species, the Grabsus grabsus. 
Man has been responsible for introducing rats to more than 80% of the islands around the world. Where we go, they follow. And so like us, they have colonized almost the whole planet. And they are not the only ones. Many other animal and vegetable species follow wherever we go. These migrations are as damaging to the natural environment as the effects of global warming. But the sea has also made it possible for the crabs to get here. Their larvae traveled on bits of driftwood, like floating tree trunks swept off the mainland by violent storms and then brought here by the ocean currents. The larvae have a life expectancy of 10 to 18 days. In that time, they could have drifted from the archipelagos of the Eastern Pacific or from the coast of Mexico, where some of their near cousins live. Once on an island, the larvae develop. These subterranean galleries provide them with essential moisture. All species of crab, whether they live on land or on sea, have gills, and humidity is essential for them to function. In order to remain properly hydrated, the planatus hides from the midday heat, but there is little shade alongside the lagoon, which is their only source of fresh water. Jean-Marie Bouchard installs sensors to measure the level of humidity. The atoll's coral ring acts like a huge sponge. By flattening their bellies against the ground, the crabs take best advantage of the cold and damp. Along with Jean Prant, who is responsible for logistics, rat killers Michel and Olivier pursue their extermination campaign. They load around 50 rat traps into the dinghy and head for the tiny islands in the middle of the closed lagoon. They want to know whether the rats have managed to reach these little patches of land. Là, là, si on arrive à mettre 15 pièges là-dessus, on va faire le tour pour les mettre le zodiac sous le vent. Sous le vent, oui, oui. On va quand même mettre des pièges. Ce qui est embêtant, c'est qu'on risque d'attraper les poules d'eau dans les pièges. Ah oui. S'il y a des nids de poules qui est de poules d'eau comme ça, c'est qu'il n'y a probablement pas de rats sur l'île. Donc on remarque tout et on va mettre... Et on met les 50 pièges là-bas. Comme ça. Moi, je vais essayer de faire le chevalier. The absence of rats on the little islands has allowed small birds, sandpipers, terns, and coots to reproduce freely there. On the main strip of land, the boobies with their sharp beaks are the only birds able to defend themselves from the rats and crabs. The problem of eradicating the rats has still not been solved. It's a real dilemma. If the rat is eradicated, then the crab population will explode again. That will endanger the vegetation growing around the coconut palms and banks of the lagoon. This vegetation is already sparse, though it is healthier now than it was in the past, when the island had a population of 10 million crabs. If the numbers of rats increase, then the number of crabs will of course diminish, and the vegetation will have a chance to recover. Hi there, Julian Toon, Waimea Telecommunications. We install and maintain domestic and commercial satellite TV, UHF Freeview and mainland TV installations in the Nelson Tasman regions. We specialise in Panasonic telephone systems and provide communications, Wi-Fi, IT and wiring for internet, fibre, computers and DSL systems. At Waimea Telecommunications we also provide specialist electronic systems for features such as a security camera you can watch on your TV, visitor alert systems and much more. Improve your security and communication and entertainment today. Call us on Waimea Telecommunications on 021 47 2297. Ytel.co.nz World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, 
electronic components. Solar and power. Electronics toys. Sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120, Hardy Street, Nelson. The crabs particularly like the thin, stringy kind of algae which grows in the lagoon and submerge themselves briefly in order to grab a few young shoots. The carcinologists have noted that the crabs generally don't venture beyond a radius of 30 meters, perhaps because they are afraid they will not be able to find their way back to their tunnels. So they form distinct populations, the lagoon crabs, the coconut palm crabs, and the coastal crabs. Given the relative lack of vegetation, the crabs of Clipperton have adapted. Though they are generally vegetarian, they have now become omnivorous. In order to survive in such a limited space, the Planatus has broadened its diet to include the bodies of dead moray eels and birds, any food the birds regurgitate, and even their eggs. Under its attractive orange shell, this good-natured herbivore has become an opportunistic scavenger, yet its favorite dish remains the coconut palm, which it shreds with great dexterity. Logistical expert Gerard Guerin and scientist Alain Coutet are making a precise inventory of Clipperton's plants. They have come up with a device for measuring palm trees. C'est une idée de Gérard, mais c'est une idée géniale. C'est le tire-bouchon spécial coconut. Pas perturber l'artiste en plein effort. On déposera avec ça le, le tuyomètre. Le tuyomètre. À cocotier. Là, ce que je fais, j'essaie d'avoir une dimension de l'arbre le plus grand pour donner les informations aux collègues qui vont ensuite analyser les, les photos qu'on va leur rapporter. Après, il faudra faire un petit calcul d'erreur. Tout ça avec l'échelle déjà. Ça monte plus Il ne manque pas grand chose. Hein. Ça ne fait pas le con. Hein. <rire> This coconut tree is 14 meters tall. Ah, à 2 mètres près, c'est bon. Hein. Tu me jures en bas in the kitchen, Pascal Salon has his work cut out for him, fighting off creatures who can't wait to loot the camp's provisions. Donc là, nous avons les deux principaux prédateurs et, et fournisseurs de dégâts des matières premières, à savoir le crabe de Clipperton et le rat de la même île. Ils sont aujourd'hui tous les deux ensemble, mais à chaque fois que j'en ai deux ensemble, il y en a un des deux qui meurt. C'est pas toujours le même. La dernière fois, c'était le rat, aujourd'hui, c'est le crabe. Donc, affaire à suivre. This egg, which the crab is so jealously guarding, doesn't come from the kitchen, but from the nest of a masked booby. This is a very rare meal because the boobies generally keep them at a distance with mighty thumps of their beaks. But the crabs make their moves whenever the male or female skips their turn in guarding the nest, leaving it unattended. While the grasses were brought to Clipperton by the wind and currents, these coconut palms were planted by man at the beginning of the 20th century. Apparently, the crabs decided to spare them. The recent decline in the number of planatus has allowed the vegetation of the island to revive a little. Alan Coutet continues taking inventory. The Ipomia is part of the bindweed family. Its elaborate root system and large leaves help to trap moisture and hence benefit the crabs. This carpet of vegetation is living on borrowed time. If the rat is eradicated and the numbers of crabs increase, they will necessarily end up eating these plants too, whether they are beneficial or not. 
Much of the vegetation is exposed to quite difficult conditions. The salty sea spray lashes the coast regularly, searing all the young shoots. On top of that, there are the cyclones which strike every year and overwhelm the poor struggling plants completely. Alain Coutet tracks down the minutest species of plant on Clipperton and even finds certain microscopic algae growing in the damp, dark corners of the rock. On the other side of the rocky peak, Jean-Marie Bouchard is pursuing his study of Planatus. Some crabs live up in the rocks, hidden in cracks, feeding off bird droppings, dead roaches, lizards of geckos. Most, however, remain on the ground, not too far from the lagoon, since they need to dip their gills in the water regularly. They also need mineral salts to harden their shells. Here the ground is harder for the crabs to dig. Food is also much scarcer, so the crabs fight more over anything that's worth having. Here, as in other relatively barren parts of the island, battles are particularly fierce. This fighting is not just a show of intimidation. The crabs can inflict serious damage on each other. This animal has lost two pattes. The two pattes, the two derniers parts of the rear right, and we can see very well the bourgeons of pattes that are in train de repousser. So these animals that are capable to lose a member voluntarily, that se sectionnent au niveau de leur hanche, and to échapper à un predator, that is, they laisse the member au predator qui généralement sont contentes et ça permet à l'animal de s'échapper. C'est comme si on perdait un bras, ça serait quand même bien qu'il puisse repousser aussi. This orange suit of armor does not protect against everything. The Planata sports a pincer for close fighting. He is actually able to amputate his own limb and then regrow it. The crabs do not always manage to get rid of a defective pincer and may drag it around for days. But when they do finally succeed, the break is clean, without any shredding of flesh. It's as if the crabs were just put together from a kit of spare parts. The nerves in the abandoned pincer give a last brief illusion of life. Joseph Poupin, another crab specialist, helps Jean-Marie Bouchard figure out the hidden twists and turns of the underground city of the Planetus. In order to work out the shape of the tunnels, one is to be filled with epoxy resin. The tunnels can be more or less deep, depending on how gritty the terrain is. The area chosen for examination is one of the softest, making it a good place for building complex networks. Jean-Marie Bouchard prepares 15 crabs, which will be displayed for the general public. This requires a particular kind of expertise, which few people now have. Nowadays, the collections are destined to be used by researchers, and the focus is on DNA. So specimens are generally just preserved in jars of alcohol. Roger Swainston is the expedition's naturalist painter. He accompanies the scientists in order to sketch the wildlife of the island. He takes advantage of the crabs Jean-Marie has prepared, much easier than trying to paint creatures which are always scuttling about. In order to make an extremely precise drawing and faithfully reproduce the species' characteristics, Roger examines many specimens of Planatus. Representatives of all the island's crab species are pinned out for display. Twenty-four hours after having poured the resin, Joseph Poupin removes the molded imprint of the crab's tunnel. Donc, ce qu'on voit essentiellement, c'est la profondeur du terrier qui, qui est assez faible, la largeur des galeries, hein, quand même euh, assez large, pas très haute, et puis un réseau. Euh, varié à partir de l'entrée principale. 
la possibilité de déboucher sur plusieurs galeries à partir d'une d'une entrée de terrier. Voilà. This part of the island is a mixture of sand, powdered coral and guano. It's as full of holes as a Swiss cheese. Joseph Poupin and Jean-Marie have counted 113 openings and 100 square meters. The physiognomy of the Planatus of Clipperton has now been recorded for posterity, but the crabs remain endangered. In the end, it's been decided to call off the extermination of the rats. They are breeding. The thousands of traps set out were not enough. Eradication is going to require another operation on a much larger scale. Jean-Louis Etienne wants to set up a permanent scientific base on Clipperton. This atoll is the perfect place to examine how an ecosystem which has been disturbed by man can once again find its own natural equilibrium. Clipperton could become a perfect example of how to protect the natural environment, an example which could be followed across the world. Hi, Dave here from Nelson Beards. And, and Jesse. We'd like to invite you all into our showroom here in Quarantine Road. Have a look at what we um, produce. We do a wide range of beds, bedroom furniture, adjustable beds, both home care style, whereby you may have people that are in a disabled um, position, or just adjustable beds for your own comfort. We do rustic furniture, furniture and, and bed frames, mattresses. So with our ranges of bases, you don't just have to go with the standard option. You can go to roll away drawers. So like this one here, you've got a nice big drawer that's not part of the base. It's separate, so it can take plenty of weight. You can put plenty in there. And it just nicely snugs underneath the base. And another option of drawers, instead of being separate rollaways, we also have the, roll, the roller runner drawers. So these are smaller because they can't take quite as much weight as what the big rollaways can, but just a bit neater, better for clothing, and again, just not neatly sit in place. So come on down and see us at Nelson Beds at 59 Quarantine Road on the way to the airport. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Well, the way Freeview is set up is that people should try and receive UHF Freeview first. Satellite should really only be a fallback option if you live in a country or in a out in the country or you live in an area that's um, maybe shielded from the transmitter. If you go terrestrial you've got the uh, advantage that you get the mainland channels as well so that's uh, plus there's an extra eight channels there plus two radio channels. So. If you need help tuning into the digital TV channels please give us a call Nelson TV and Video Services 41 Halifax Street Millersoga Car Park. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery. We have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob, 120 Hardy Street, Nelson.